Hey, everyone. Uh, good evening for me, probably good morning for you. I'm sorry we couldn't be together for our preseason meeting. Uh, the weather didn't end up being quite as bad as it looked like it would, but looks like there may or may not have been some tornadoes. I don't know. Either way, here is the preseason meeting that we were going to do. Uh, for those of you who have been with us before, you're going to see there's not a lot of changes. For those of you who are new to the program, uh, I think you'll see that a lot of what we're going to talk about was mentioned either in emails, interviews, and some informal discussions we've had. So there shouldn't be a ton of new stuff in here, uh, but there is enough that it's going to be important. What is new is important. So hopefully I can go relatively quickly through this and make sure we're all on the same page before we start the season. So for some of you, this is welcome back. For some of you, this is welcome to the Urban Debate League. Um, Thank you so much for being with us. Obviously, we couldn't have these programs if we didn't have coaches. The kids would have no one to learn from and they'd have no structure in which to practice or go to tournaments. So your job is very valuable. And I want to start right off the top by saying I'm very thankful that you're here. I'm very appreciative that you're here. And my job and Jen and Malik's job as program staff is really to support you to be the best coach that you can be. OK, so if you ever feel like you're not being the best coach you can be, if there's some structural problems or things come up in your life, whatever happens, right? Um, let us know. We'll do our best to help problem solve with you. So what we're going to talk about today is uh, I'm going to go through some major resources. I'm going to go through some major timelines and dates. And then I'm going to talk about a few other pieces at the end, like your contract, which are extremely important for you to know and for you to ask us about if you feel like you uh, still have questions or problems with them. So first up is the coaches folder. Uh, the coaches folder is really important. I will be sending this to you at the end of, or probably in this email. Um, and I'll probably also send it to you more or less every week, or at least a part of it, a link to it. Some piece of it will be in the emails that I send every week. But regardless of that, I want you to go to the coaches folder, which is probably linked in the email that I sent this out in. And I want you to go bookmark that page. I want you to be able to find this really, really easily because you're going to go back to this at least once a week, if not quite a bit more throughout the season. So for you to know where it is and be able to find it efficiently and easily is going to be really, really important. Um, every Pretty much everything I talk about today is going to be in there somewhere in a subfolder. So being able to find it is really, really important. Okay. Other things that are in that coaches folder, one of the most important is the um, timeline and schedule for all the upcoming tournaments. So I really recommend that you let your team know what tournaments you're going to go to and give it to them sort of on day one. That's what they do in sports. That's what they do in other competitive activities. That way, the students, your debaters know what's what the deal is. And uh, you can share it with their parents also to let them know like, hey, these Fridays, these Saturdays, we're going to be here at this time. Here's what's going to be happening. That way you can make sure everything is set to go right away at the beginning of the season. And then you just follow up over time to make sure all the pieces are moving. So with regards to the tournaments, um, there's two different types of tournaments. One are core tournaments and one are non-core tournaments. So core tournaments are tournaments where we expect all the teams to be there for at least one of the two days. So some of the tournaments are Saturday only. We would expect you at the Saturday of that tournament. Some of the tournaments are Friday and Saturday. We would expect you to be at one of those two days. Most teams choose to go to both days. Um, I think that's great. I think it's really valuable to do both the Friday and the Saturday and get the whole experience. But if you're not able to do both days or if it's too much of a time commitment for you or the kids can't do both days, no problem, right? Just choose the one that you can get the most people to and push them to do that. Um, there's six core regular tournaments, which we'll go over in the next slide, and then sections and state. Sections and state is a core tournament. We want every team to compete at sections and try to qualify to state. The top 24 partnerships in Minnesota get to go to state. And um, there's probably about 32 partnerships in the entire state. Tops. So your odds are pretty good that if you win a debate or two, you actually can go to state. So I really strongly recommend everyone go send some kids, get the experience. Thing about that, though, is you really only need one coach to be there. 
So you need to designate for your team which coach is going to be there and who's going to take the kids to sections and state. Could be one coach, could be all three, four, whatever coaches, up to you, right? Um, this used to be, for those of you who have been with us two or three years, you probably remember that this there used to be an extra incentive payment on top to go there. But when we normalized everyone's payment to $3,000, that exceeded those amounts. So now everybody's just, everybody's just normalized $3,000, right? No more incentives. Um, the other tournaments are the non-core tournaments. So non-core tournaments are local tournaments, like they're happening in, you know, Eden Prairie or uh, Rosemount, Blake, whatever, St. Francis. Uh, but we do not expect you to go there. So if you want to go there, that's fine. We can help set that up for you. We can help you find judges. We can get you buses if that's something we normally do. We can help um, pay the entry fees, all that good stuff. But you have to let us know ahead of time. If you tell us on Thursday that you want to go something on Friday, it's probably not going to happen. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of moving pieces we have to get together. So let me know at least two weeks in advance, ideally more, which means that you have to be talking to your kids about what tournaments you want to go to. Okay. So if you want to go to non-core tournaments, just let me know. We'll figure it out. But we do have to work that out ahead of time. Okay. Okay. Here are the actual core tournaments. Uh, they're name, date, location, and the Friday and Saturday times. So first one is the MDTA Jamboree at YZ. That's on September 28th. Uh, they start that one pretty early. The first round's at 8.30 and then we'll end by 4.30 p.m. So most of you will be getting picked up probably like 7.30ish, I would imagine, to get out to YZ. Uh, depending on how many schools are on your bus, it, it might be a little earlier or a little later. Second tournament is at the University of Minnesota on Friday and Saturday on October 4th and 5th. Uh, I believe we'll be entirely on the West Bank this year. So Friday will be right after school, 4 to 8, and then Saturday will be 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., just like MDTA Jamboree. Uh, third tournament will be the Rose Bowl. Rose Bowl, same uh, schedule for Friday afternoon, 4 to 8. We'll be at Roseville High School. And then Saturday, we start a little bit later. We'll start at 9 and then end around 4.30 to 5-ish, somewhere in that range. Um, November 8th and 9th will be the Tamar Kaplan Tournament at Central High School. Friday, same time, 4 to 8. Um, and then Saturday, we'll start a little later. We'll start at 10, and we should end around 5, 5.30, maybe 6-ish if things really get pushed back. Um, November 23rd is Umbrooks. We'll be at the U of M on West Bank. It's no, there's no Friday that day. Uh, and it's just Saturday and it'll be 10 to 530, just like Tamar Kaplan. And then our final core tournament is the MNUDL City Championships, which is sort of the capstone tournament for the vast majority of our kids for the season. So the location for that is Washington Technology Magnet School. On Friday, it's four to uh, eight. And then on Saturday, we start a little bit early. We start at 9.15 so that we can have lunch around um, 12.31-ish because we have a longer award ceremony that sort of reflects the entirety of the season. Then we uh, go to one semifinals debate in each division, and then the buses leave. So the students who are scheduled for finals, I'll take them home in the Augsburg van, or we'll have parents pick them up. We'll find some way to get them home. Um, that's going to be through normal situation, right? And then sections in state are on January 10th and 11th, and then January 17th and 18th. You can only go state if you qualify from the sections. Um, and um, I'll talk a little bit more about those, what's different about those in a second. So you may have noticed on that sheet, some of them are marked online. Some of them are marked in person, different days. Um, the way our core tournaments are going to work is that Fridays are always online. This is mostly due to not having enough buses in the city to actually pick kids up and bring them somewhere on a Friday. Um, so what will happen on Fridays is uh, you'll stay at your school with your kids. You'll get the kids all together. Around four o'clock, we'll start the first debate. So you'll have at least 30 minutes to sort of check in on them, make sure you have your partnerships, get them snacks, water, open up, you know, what dev whatever device they're using, get them on. Um, we have a pretty slick system for doing things online. So if this, if, You've never done this before and this seems daunting. Don't worry about it too much. We've done this a lot of times and it usually goes it usually goes pretty smooth. Um, we'll order pizza to you for dinner between the first and second debates. And then once the two debates are done at around 8, 8.15-ish, 
uh, the debaters would be picked up and sent home, or they can go home on public transportation. It's actually really pretty easy. It goes pretty smooth. Saturdays are going to be in person. So for Saturdays, you will meet your team at your school. The bus picks you all up at a designated time. Sometimes you have other UDL schools that you'll pick up after that or who have been picked up before you. And then after the tournaments are all done, like at 4.35 ish, that same bus will take you back to your school on the same route you were on before. Um, and then once you're back at your school, your debaters get picked up by their caregivers or they take public transportation home, just like pretty much any other activity. Okay, second major thing that's in these in the coaches folder is the curriculum and slash lesson plans. So in the coaches folder, there is a subfolder labeled curriculum. Uh, and there's in that folder, there's novice A and novice B. And then there's also going to be JV varsity, which we'll get to in a minute. So the lesson plans will pretty much take you through the entirety of the year. And that all, all of them, every single lesson plan includes a slideshow and a written curriculum to sort of say, hey, here's what's coming up. Here's what we're going to be talking about and doing. Uh, if there's handouts that you give the kids, that will also be in there. So our goal is really we create the evidence set. We create the curriculum. The curriculum should be really good about making reference and making use of the evidence set since it's all internal. And if you just use the curriculum straight out of the box for novice A or novice B, it should take you all the way throughout the year. The kids should be progressing at a good rate and they should be meeting the learning goals we're looking for in each division, right? Um, so is using this required? No, not at all. If you don't like it, if you feel like you can do your own thing and you've got it, go for it. This is just a support to help make things easier and more effective for a lot of you. Can you edit this if you'd like? Yes. Maybe you really like one of these lesson plans, but you don't like, you know, the icebreaker. You want to change it to this other thing. That's great. Go ahead, make a copy, put it in your own folder, and then switch a few things around. Don't like the color template? Change the color template. Whatever you want to do, right? I will email, email you all out every week about my recommendations of what to be doing with the novice A and novice B curriculum. So if you feel like, you know, maybe you'll just go straight through it chronologically, that works. Um, if we're getting up to a tournament where, you know, we know flowing is going to be a big thing and we haven't got to flowing yet, then maybe I'll say, hey, Tuesday or Thursday, let's work on flowing folks, right? So I will help guide you in this process, but you can also self-guide in this process if you would like to. Okay, that goes uh, hand in hand with the evidence sets. So for those of you who have been around before, um, these are the same five divisions we've had in the past. There's novice A, novice B, novice C, junior varsity, and then varsity, right? Kids will start in novice A, and then they'll progress through these over some period of time. For some kids, um, maybe they don't come to a lot of practices or tournaments or this or debate just doesn't click with them. It might take them a lot longer to get through this. Some kids, they either really click with debate or maybe they did middle school debate or both. They might be in JV by the end of their first year. That's fine. Both of those are good. Your job as the coach is to get kids through and learning and having fun on a schedule that makes sense for them, right? So if you feel like one kid's taking a long time, that's fine. If you feel like another kid's taking, you know, going really fast, that's okay too, right? So the evidence sets, how they actually work is novice A is the, the the very beginning, right? So the evidence for that is pretty limited. We'll give kids um, sort of the law that they're trying to pass called the affirmative plan. And within the affirmative plan, they'll have two major advantages. So one of them will talk about why um, regulating AI using copyright law will help save journalism and democracy. And the other one will talk about how regulating AI through copyright will help make better data that will um, prevent AI from going haywire, essentially, through the military. Um, the novice A's also have a disadvantage argument. And that disadvantage argument is basically about how the US is in a race with China technologically, militarily, uh, economically, all that good stuff. And if we slow down AI development, we will lose that race with China, which is bad. So. Everything the novices are going to be talking, novice A are going to be talking about is based on that evidence set and uses that evidence set to make those actual arguments. So as your kids get into the debate season, what they're going to be doing is using that evidence set in all the debates and sort of 
playing around with it, tinkering with it, deciding, do I use this evidence or that evidence? How do I make my arguments? How do I explain them in the later parts of the debate to make, to, to persuade the judge using um, reasoning and evidence, right? Okay, so once they have proficiency in novice A, they move up to novice B. In novice B, they can still use what they had in novice A. They can still use the disadvantage. They can still use the two advantages. In fact, if they're affirmative, they have to, right? But now the novice Bs also unlock uh, three new arguments. So they unlock a critique. A critique is basically a philosophical argument that talks about what should our orientation be towards AI. It's not enough to just regulate it and say, well, it'll probably be okay now. We should really think about like, how does AI change us as people? How does it change our society? Is that a good change or a bad change? Who, who benefits from it? And how could we reorder society or technology to make that better, right? Um, second is topicality. Topicality is basically talking about the rules of debate and does the affirmative fit those rules or do they break those rules? And then third is the counter plan. So in novice A, the negative just says, don't pass that plan, it's a bad plan. In novice B, they get the counter plan. They get to say, instead of passing the affirmative plan, pass this other plan, which is better and does and solves the problems without causing other problems. Um, so that's basically novice A, novice B. Once they're done with novice B, they move up to novice C. Novice C is going to be very similar to last year. We want kids to build on the existing evidence packet by doing limited research. So I think what we're going to do for novice B is going to have kids look on Google News and we're going to uh, hit the date sorter and limit anything, uh, limit to only be articles from 7 one up to the present. Okay. So anything before that off limits, anything from that time to the present, whenever that kid is doing their research, whether it's October, November, December, whatever, right. Um, that's, that's allowed. That's good. And then JV varsity if you're JV varsity, you know what you're working with. There's basically no limit. Um, kids can argue whatever they want. They can argue about the arguments. They can argue about debate. So very open uh, structure there. Okay. Um, if you're reading through this, you can go, it, it, you know, you'll be able to access this slideshow. You can go straight to this link, or you can go to the coaches folder and then go to the evidence set. Within the evidence set, so here's the coach materials, right? There's this folder called novice A and B evidence sets. You can open that up. There's novice A and B and then novice A and B together. Um, as of this time, this is mostly done, but it might change a little bit. We'll definitely have the final product by Labor Day. So if you click in here, you'll see, hey, here's all the actual arguments that the evidence for the arguments that are in here this year, right? So if you want to take a look at them, they're in here. Again, these may change slightly. But by Monday, I'm going to send them to print. So what you see is what you'll get on Monday. Um, okay, so the JV Varsity Evidence Drive. This is something that is new this year. This is something that Malik has been working on with quite a few people from the community. Uh, and I think it's really great. And I'm going to do my best to represent it well for all of you. So just to get this out of the way right, right quickly, the JV evidence drive is not a limit to the arguments. There is no JV or varsity packet that the kids are stuck to, okay? So don't worry. Your JV varsity can work the way it's always worked before. But the point of this evidence and curricular drive is that we want to make sure all the new kids jumping up to JV or varsity have a bunch of resources available to them that both are curated and work pretty well. So this is really just helpful materials for jumping up to that level. Um, if it's not already, by the time this goes out, this will be a subfolder in your coach's material folder. So just like how we looked at the novice A and B evidence, the JV varsity drive will be a folder just like that in there. Uh, here's what it looks like. So there's a bunch of different pieces to it, um, but some of the important ones in here are the MNUDL shared portals drive, that will take you to the different various drives that contain relevant information, arguments, et cetera. Um, the submissions is where to submit additions. So if you want to say, hey, um, I cut this really cool modern monetary uh, disad critique. Um, I want to put it into the folder. Can I submit? You put it into the submission drive. Or if you say, I have a really cool lesson plan for teaching flowing. I want everyone to be able to flow in this way. How do I get it into the drive itself? 
you put it into the submissions. Um, everything else in here is for tracking and figuring out the actual submissions and assignments themselves. So um, the curricular form, curricular drive form tracks everything that's going in and out. The lesson plan template is really important. It's going to show you how, you know, we want to standardize how everyone is creating their lesson plan so you can pick it up and use it regardless of who made it, right? Um, the shared drives master sheet tracks all the drive assignments and where they're at. And then the shared drives planning tracks where are we at in the season and what are we actually doing? We'll talk about those real quick. So this is the lesson plan template. As you can see, um, has some really good pieces to it. I believe that this is from Sky Spindler. So if you have any specific questions about this, I would say ask me, Sky, or Malik. We'd be happy to talk with you about it. But basically, this is a standardization to help us figure out what is this lesson plan actually trying to do? How are we trying to do it? And how will we know that we've done it, right? And then also, what resources do you need to do those things? So this is really important for making sure everything is standardized, that when we put it into coaches' hands, everyone is, you know, singing from the same choir book, right? We all know what we're all saying, and we're all on the same page. Um, this is what the drive actually looks like on the inside. You're going to have plenty of time to look at this, so I don't want to go over it too much. But basically, let's say you're like, hey, I want to teach my JVers flowing. I've used the novice packet, the novice lessons, but I want to try something a little bit new. I want to try something harder. What do I do? Okay, go to folder 11 where it says flowing, go try whatever's in there for flowing, or you can just work through these in chronological order um, if you want to. Although some of them obviously are older, like middle school curricular and novice curricular. Um, the back files drive in here is really great too. A lot of teams have done a lot of work to accumulate evidence throughout the years on different topics, some of which is still highly relevant to what we're doing with um, intellectual property this year, and some of which is not so relevant. But in debate, since everything flows from making arguments with evidence, it's really important to have a big evidence back file so that you kind of have an answer to everything, right? So the back files drive is actually really important for that purpose. Um, and this is just the directory. This is the tracker of everything that's going on um, and all the different types of arguments. It's actually organized really nice. So uh, I believe it was Teddy who put this together. If not, my apologies, but to whoever put this together, very appreciative. It's great stuff. Um, yeah, these are just some of the, the back files. So like, for example, if you want to visit the 1920 arm sales topic, go in there and then you can find um, aggregated materials from that time. So Again, you, you might hear some older stuff. You might hear some stuff from previous topics. This makes it easy to track that down and go find um, answers. The student resources drive um, does, it fulfills a similar function. Um, there's a bunch of really good information in here. Probably too much to go over right now, but I do suggest you poke around in here, especially if you want to use the shared resource drive for JV Varsity. Go check out the student resources drive and see what's in there. Um, to use with your kids. Okay, so from this whole meeting, um, everything above, all the supports I talked about, the big takeaway I want for you is not, hey, here's all your resources, go be successful and stop bothering us, right? That's not how this works. We know that you are at a site, you have kids, you have a whole context to what's going on. There's gonna be things that you expect and things you don't expect. Right. So we want to help you to be as prepared as possible and be able to react to anything that's going on in your school and on your team to be highly successful, whether that's doing a really great job recruiting, uh, making sure kids move up really quickly, making sure that the vibes are great, making sure all the coaches are on the same page with their expectations, communications, everything is involved in that process. And we want to help you as much as possible to have a really successful process. So. From our end, obviously, we're going to send all this material to you. And then we're also going to send you weekly emails and check, check in as possible, which includes, you know, texting, email, um, showing up at practice and what have you. But at the same time, there's only so much we can do, right? We can't be at every practice at every school. Most of you practice on the same day. There's 15 UDL schools. There's no way to be at all of them at the same time with our three people. So... If there is a larger or more persistent problem on your team, please let us know so that we can help. 
We want to help. We want to see your kids do as well as they can. And we want to make sure that you are not overly stressed or anxious as a coach. And I believe that that is all possible. It's very possible. If we have good lines of communication between each other and between your co-coaches, you and us, right? So we're all playing for the same team. I don't want you to think of me as like a manager who's going to punish you if you're, you know, you don't meet quota or whatever. Um, really, our job is to support you as much as possible to be as successful as possible. So if you're running into problems, hopefully we'll ask you about them and figure them out. But if we don't ask about them, if we don't figure them out, it's not because we don't want to know, it's just because that's not something that, you know, we have been able to figure out. So if you want help, let us know. We do want to help you. Please come to us. Um, that's all the major stuff about what the actual season will look like. In terms of um, preparatory documents, I believe you've all been sent the contract info and updates. Uh, you probably have one of two contracts. One contract is for being paid by the MNUDL. So in this case, we are actually paying you, like we will cut your check from Augsburg. Um, in there, it goes over all the dates, all the duties, all the responsibilities. Where it has those responsibilities, I think every coach should try to be involved in all of those. But ultimately, one person is going to be sort of like the point person for doing specific things like attendance and data and all that good stuff or coaching JV varsity, things like that, right? So it's really important for us to talk together um, you know, early in the season to figure out which coach is in charge of what and how can we make sure everyone is well supported to be successful at it. Um, the second contract is paid by SPPS or paid by school. So if you're paid by your district or your school, um, the process is different, right? Obviously, we are not paying you any money, but you are contracting with us to fulfill these services and fulfill the services that the district expects you to provide. So I would really like everyone to fill out their contracts and make sure we're all on the same page about what we're actually doing and who's doing it, right? Um, the other half of that is for most of you, I've asked you to go confirm that your stipend is allocated by the district or um, activities director, principal, lead clerk, whoever actually functionalizes that in your school. If you haven't done that, please do that. I wanna make sure you get paid and for many of you, we don't have a backup amount of money um, available, right? It's not stipended. So if your school doesn't pay you, it's not like we can just make it up on the back end. You really do have to get paid by the school if that's what the plan is. Um, there's some minor changes to the contracts this year. I feel like everything in there is pretty self-explanatory, but it's good to be explicit about these stuff. this stuff so that we're all on the same page. So one of the new additions is just clarifying some language around, you know, mostly being at tournaments and practices, which is just that whenever you're in charge of kids or whenever you're around your students, uh, you should not be under the influence of alcohol or other illicit substances. So even if they're legal, even if you're 21 and you can, you're, you can legally drink or whatever, if you are in charge of kids, like if a kid gets injured, they're screwing around on the stairs and they fall down and twist their ankle or whatever. If you're the coach who's there in charge of them, you cannot be under any the influence of any substances, right? Whether it's legal or not, or whether you know you're actually around the kids or not, whatever. You're responsible for the kids. Do not let it happen. So I feel like that's pretty obvious, but it was not explicit in the contracts before. Now it is. Um, the other section is the COVID-19 protocols. So it's been almost five years since um COVID-19, uh, technically, I guess. Um so the details in there are less detailed and we're also probably not going to be doing a lot of COVID uh, structuring for our tournaments the way that we used to two or three years ago, the last time we had this, this contract. So um, just less in there, but not, not that we're not taking it seriously. We're going to, you know, be monitoring it and respond if anything changes, but it has become less of an issue over time. So there's not as much language around it. Um, the forms we need you to sign have already been sent to you by email. So one is the contract. So again, even if you're getting paid by a school or district, we need you to sign a contract just so we're all on the same page. And then second is the W-9. W-9 is so that we can pay you. Um, even if we don't pay you, we may end up reimbursing you for something. So please do send us a W-9 so we can just facilitate that easily. Um, third is the mandated reporter training. 
So if you're employed by school district, uh, you already have mandated report training. You don't need to send this in. But if you're not employed by school district, you must do the mandated reporter training. Uh, there'll be a form to sign and there'll be more about this at the end, but you have to watch a video and take a pretty simple test that goes over what's in there. Uh, and then fourth is a background check. Um, if you are employed at a partner school at a district, you don't need to do this because you've already done it through the district. But if you're not, again, you have to do the background check. We have to do our due diligence with our grant funders. And also it's just a good idea to background check everyone uh, just because. So please take five minutes to sign your contract and other forms now. Um, the email comes from PandaDoc, which I believe it docs at gmail.pandadocs.net. The subject will say something like Nero Stratopania sent you, you know, a contract, whatever, via PandaDoc. And then there's going to be a Sterling Volunteers background check that you just punch some information into. You don't pay anything. We pay it on our end to do the background check for you. So pretty simple. If you have any questions about the contract or any of this, please send them ASAP so that we can answer them, get it figured out, whatever, whatever we have to do so that we can get you into the system. And if we need, to, if we're going to pay you, we can pay you at the specified times, okay? Um, one final thing with all that is some quick demographics forms. So if you could just take three minutes, scan this code, punch it in. This is just anonymous information that's helpful when we apply for grants. Um, most of you know, we do a lot of SEL stuff. Like kids will answer things like, hey, does my coach care about me? Do I see you know, debate leading to a future career or help me manage my emotions more, stuff like that. And stuff like this is really helpful in terms of being able to fill that data set out when we're talking to grant funders, being able to say like, hey, here's the students, here's the adults, here's the outcomes. It's all good stuff, right? Uh, additionally, I want to highlight that at your kickoffs, every student has to fill out what's called the MNUDL quick info sheet or quick form. Uh, it's just going to ask kids for like name, email, school, so we can put them into the system and make it really easy for you to follow up with them. The biggest fumbles we have in terms of recruitment is not that kids don't like debate or they, they don't want to have pizza or they don't like the coaches personally. The biggest fumbles we have are these logistical pieces get lost and a kid shows up, but we never have a way to contact them again or tell them that tournaments are happening or tell them what the scholarships are going to be if if they have, you know, if they maintain in debate. So get them into the system so that we can make sure all of this is going smoothly, right? Retain kids, get them recruited on. Um, if you're a teacher coach, you don't have to worry about mandatory reporter training, but if you're a community coach, all of the instructions will be sent in the latter half of this email. Uh, the mandatory reporter training is very important. You cannot coach if you have done not done the mandatory reporter training. So please do that before the actual first practice that you have, which I assume will be um, sometime the week of the ninth. Uh, there's a video. You take a quiz. Quiz is not that hard, but it's important that you get 100% right. My goal for mandatory reporter training is not that you know every little specific piece of minutia in the law. My goal is that you know that mandatory reporter training is a thing. You have the resources to access how to answer questions about it. And you you sort of have a general sense of when you're supposed to act and in what way, right? What you should be paying attention to when you hear kids talk. As far as I know, we've never actually had anyone do a mandatory report on anything a student or other adult has said, but that doesn't mean it's not going to happen. And that doesn't mean that you don't have to be trained. Okay. So Please make sure you take the mandatory reporter training. If you don't have it done by mid next week, I will follow up with you and ask you to do it. Um, I believe that's it. That is it. So welcome to the Minnesota Urban Debate League. Welcome back for many of you. I think we're going to have a great year. I know when we did our teacher coach and community coach professional development, there's a lot of excitement for the upcoming year. And I know everyone's doing a lot of work to get the recruitment off and running correctly. So I feel like we're going to have a really big league this year. I feel like we're becoming more and more competitive, more and more better. We have better coaches all the time. I feel like everything's getting better. So I'm very excited for this year and I can't wait to see what happens as we continue. So I will see you all soon. Uh, let me know when your kickoff dates are. For those of you who need to do the mandatory reporting, please do it. And most importantly, get in touch with your co-coaches and make sure you have everything planned out, squared away.
to start the season off correctly. I'll see you all soon.